Hello, everyone. This is Michelangelo Badio. Uh, we've had some issues today. Um, I, I apologize for that. But uh, hopefully uh, I start seeing uh, people online. Anyway, uh, yeah, we, we can't seem to get this thing reversed. I turn into the green Manalishi when it's reversed. But anyway, um, I want to talk to you today about modes and about scales. Now, hello. Uh, hey, Willie G. Denny is on there. Diana, hello. Um, anyway, this has been pretty crazy. I'm sorry I'm backwards, but it was either backwards or no words. <laughs> no words today on Facebook Live. And so here's what I want to talk to you about. Modes and scales. Now, when we play, let's see who else is online here. Tiffany. Hey, Denny. Yeah, there I am. I'm backwards, but I'm here. Uh, it was really weird. If somebody knows about this, I mean, I consider myself pretty tech savvy. And uh, when I, I have the brand new iPhone 11 Pro, when you hit the icon to flip it over, I turn green. The whole screen looks like a green negative. And, and we couldn't, I, I, it worked the other day, but I don't know why. I don't know if it's a Facebook setting or in my phone. It doesn't seem like it's my phone. Uh, it just won't allow me to reverse the thing without turning the whole screen green. I've tried everything. So anyway, sorry about this. Okay, we've got a lot of people online already. Great, thank you very much. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about with scales and modes that I, my degree is in orchestral music, music theory based on, on uh, you know, I don't mean classical, like the classical era, like Mozart and Haydn, but I mean classical music. And so for what we call the melodic minor scale, uh, then they started calling it the jazz minor. And, and so uh, what happened is things got a little murky. Um, I have a, a book that I, I keep with me all the time. It's the Harvard Dictionary of Music. And I got a smaller version of it that's more of a layman, un, unquote, uh, version of it. So it's much easier to read. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of, yeah, more green machine than man. Yes. Uh, but uh, I cannot help. Uh, I'm sorry I'm backwards. We know that this is the situation, but Facebook changed their software and it has not been easy since then. I have no explanation. I'm sure maybe one of you can figure it out. Uh, we'll get to the bottom of it. Probably after we're done with this, it'll be working perfectly. And so, but anyway, getting back to the scales and modes idea. Um, one of the things that I was taught in school was there's a big differentiation between scales and modes. That scales have a tonal center. In other words, now I'm using a little uh, sawtooth 25 watt solid state amp with reverb. I love. Okay, anyway, so what I learned is that without a tonal center, You really don't have a scale that it's more modal see what when when you listen to renaissance counterpoint and renaissance music the major scale hadn't been established uh, you know this meaning so that wasn't established as the the center the, the cornerstone of our our listening and our music the major scale really is the focal point of music for us and then it branches out, but it wasn't always like that. The major scale was just another mode. But one thing that differentiated that scale is that it resolved. In other words, see modes, um, a lot of the modes can't do that. The natural minor scale or the aeolian mode. doesn't go so anyway but uh, I've been reading up on this too because see over the years in in the 21st century um, there's a million variations of, of scales and modes now and and it gets all kind of 
uh, jumbled together where some somebody the other day actually told me, there's over 2,000 scales! I went, are you out of your mind? And so I consulted the Oracle, which is my Harvard Dictionary. And they said, uh, you know, at, at present counting, they can count, you know, uh, around 30-something scales, you know, proper scales. Then I went online and it said, well, there's over 200 scales, not 2,000. But see, it could be 2,000 in, in today's thinking because you could just do some weird assembly of notes and call it a scale. And so... But that's not the way I learn music. And so I want to show you a more traditional approach that still every bit is, is valid and, and is intellectual today as, as it was uh, back in the day. Now, one of the things you have to understand, and this is the hardest thing to understand, is, okay, let's see, I'm, there, there's a lot of, uh, of questions out here. Okay, we have four, a lot of people online. But one of the things that I want to tell you is that our harmony, it's got a weird word. It's called Tertian harmony. Sounds kind of like, we are warriors! We are Tertians. <laughs> you know, it's like, we are going to invade your land. <laughs> but what Tertian harmony means is harmony based on thirds. See, everything we do is in threes. One, three, five, seven, nine, thirteen. And so... That's the highest chord you can get. It doesn't go like a 14th chord or a 15th chord. It's only a 13th. And so 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Like an 11th chord, pretty nice chord. Uh, like this. 11th chord's like a suspension. And so anyway, so once you know these basic things, that our harmony is in thirds, everything in music is a number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, octave. So you have do, re, re, fa, do, la, ti, do. And so that is a major scale. Everybody knows that. Everybody here, do, a deer, a female deer, play a trouble, do, do. You know, so everybody knows that sound. That is, that is the first thing you need to know about scales that the major scale is the basis of its all for, for now, for our tonal system, the way we interpret it. And so everything branches out from there. It wasn't always like that. But for to, for, to understand it properly, it, it's really important because one is all and all is one when it comes to scales and modes. And here's what I mean. If you think of it in a number system, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, now that's eight, but it's also back to one. Okay, there's a okay. A lot of people are online here, but what I'm what I'm trying to say is that, and I want to make this clear to people who might not understand. You know, because a lot of the elitists and the purists and the ones who have the absolute truths of what is music and what is not, what is good, what is bad, uh, it, it's not like that. In the 21st century, there's a lot of gray areas. So we used to consider scales only things that could resolve, like this. Harmonic matter. And so what you had is, like when I used to go a, uh, In no boundaries, that is a harmonic minor. That is a scale because you it resolves back to itself. See, modes don't usually do that, but in this era, modes and scales, uh, you know, you could it, it, the word has become kind of a little bit interchangeable. And and I did research on this before I did this uh, class today. And so here's what we're going to start with: the major scale, the the. The mother, the father of it all, the omnipotent scale. Now, the crazy thing about this is that the modes, this was a mode at one time, it was called the Ionian mode, but that's a whole other thing. When you play, consider that the scale, that major scale. Now, for people who aren't that... Uh, uh, advanced in theory. There's funny ways that I used to remember things. Now, I've, I've 
study theory my whole life. So it, it's been second nature to me since I was 16 years old. But what I tell people that aren't as familiar is just there's only four chords. There's major, minor, augmented, diminished. That's it. See, music is actually fairly simple. What happens, it's kind of like metal. We used to just have heavy metal, but now we have all different variations of metal. There's gent. There's death metal. Well, I'd like to, I'd like to actually consider a new version, vegan death metal. Brock Olive Cauliflower. So, in other words, you can have all these different variations of metal. It was never like that. It started off as heavy metal, then then that was the, the trunk of the tree. Then the tree went like this. Well, it's the same with scales and modes. But if you know the baseline, the bottom, the starting point, the rest becomes easy. So you have a major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Octave or back to one, meaning eight. Like an octave means where same note, just an octave higher, octave lower. Okay, but then here's where it gets a little tricky. The modes, it's about sound. For example, if I take a major scale and go like this. That's A major. Now, if I want to start on the second note, the second degree, so A, like Do, Re. So if I want to start on Re, and I play the a, the notes in an A major scale, here's what it sounds like. It sounds completely different. Exact same notes, but it sounds different. Why? Because that is playing a mode. See, every one of those notes in the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, has, if you just play every note in A major, but you start on the second note. That's a Dorian mode. You start on the third mode, the, the third scale degree. That's the Phrygian mode. So what, and you're not playing any different notes. That is the wild thing about it, that it's all the same. It's what you start on and what you end on it's, it's the sound uh, in, your, in your brain, in your mind, and the sound that's actually starting from one note going an octave up that makes the difference. And so all, and this is the thing that was the hardest for me to understand because now we're talking literally, they used to call these the church modes because, um, and in the 13th century, there was actually modes based on rhythm. Like in poetry, you know, they have, iambic pentameter. Yeah, I know a lot of stuff. And, uh, but in other words, it's a flow. It's a rhythmic flow. Well, they actually had rhythmic modes. So, I mean, this thing goes way back. But, but the ideas have changed over the centuries. But one thing doesn't change. You can have, you can, hey, if you've got 2,000 scales, you want to remember them, I'm sure Alan Holdsworth didn't know any of them, and he played pretty good. And so all I can tell you is this. If you start with the basics, really, it's all you need. Frank Ambali did a great instructional program called Modes, No More, no More Mysteries. I can guarantee you, he didn't even do 30 different scales. It's just not that necessary. I mean, you have hexatonic, that's pretty cool, because uh, it, it's, it's based on, on fourths and one, two, three with that half step. And so, but there are, again, it's different today than it was. We have new interpretations of things. So anyway, you start on a major scale. Each one of those notes if you play in thirds, like I just told you, creates a chord. First degree, major. Second degree, minor. Third degree, minor. Fourth degree, major. Fifth, major. Sixth, minor. Seventh, diminished. And then back to major. So this is the basis. If you just think in numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And, and one of the things you can do is memorize this. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, 
back home. So it's major, minor, minor, major, major. Then you have minor, then you have diminished, then major. And so in each one of these notes, not only has a chord, but it has a mode designed around that. So if you start on A, A major. Now if I play all the notes in A, but I start on B, the Dorian mode. Then if I want to start uh, on C, it's the or C sharp, it's the Phrygian mode. D, it's the Mixolydian mode. I'm sorry, the Lydian mode. E, it's the Mixolydian mode, Aeolian mode, Locrian. It's all these yeah, 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 yeah. All these yada, yada, yada names for, you have to memorize a couple things. You have to remember that there's seven main scale degrees until you hit the next note. That's one. Second, you have to memorize that there are chords associated with each one of those seven tones. We are starting on the major scale. See, the major scale is actually a mode, but that's a whole other talk. Remember, in the 20th century, we have, we have morphed a lot of things. It's kind of like, you know, uh, fusion cuisine, you know, when you can get a burrito sushi. And so, I mean, everything's kind of meshed together and jumbled together. And that's really cool. I mean, you know, I guess it's the evolution of music, but there's some things that don't change. If you learn these simple universal truths, and one is that start on the major scale. Everybody knows. So you know the notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, octave or eight. Then you can say, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the major scale. If I want to go starting from the second degree, that's the Dorian mode. Well, let's move it down to G. And this works. The beauty of music, it works 100% of the time. So, okay, let's see. A lot of questions are coming in. Do I like to go to detuning? Uh... Uh, yeah, I mean, I like detuning, you know, I mean, Mark Tremonti loves detuning. He wrote millions, you know, he sold millions of CDs and albums, you know, uh, doing detuning. So yeah, I like it. Uh, but just remember, there's so many different modes, there's so many different scales. Uh, but if you learn the main ones, then you have a foundation because see, one of the things with my teachings, I'm always about starting at the ground level and building up because I, I think that's the best way to, to make sense of it all because it's so complicated because it's so simple. It's like trying to explain to somebody what the heck a wheel is unless they've seen it. Oh, well, yeah, it's this kind of thing, a round thing. Well, what's round? Well, you know, it's kind of like this. Well, what is this? You know, it's if you've never seen them, if you have no frame of reference, how do you explain it? Well, it's the same thing in music. And so the frame of reference starts at this major scale. Now let's move it down to G. Watch. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So you have the G major scale. Now here's what, if I play G major, but starting on A. It's called the Dorian mode. And when you think of Dorian, One of the things that people uh, misinterpret from me, uh, it's even on my Wikipedia page and it's completely wrong. Uh, I, a lot of Wikipedia is wrong for me. Uh, but they said that I like the key of F sharp because it's dark and ominous. It's not true. What I said was that over the course of music history, people like Mozart or Haydn or Vivaldi or Bach, name a famous composer, there were certain keys that just evoked in their mind a different atmosphere, like, uh, like for example, Crazy Train. That would technically be in the Aeolian mode or natural minor scale, but it's in F sharp. Why? Because F sharp, even when I tune it down, but the position of F sharp sounds evil. It sounds mean. And so... This is what I was saying, that I don't prefer F-sharp. You know, someone asked me the other day, well, what key do you like? I like them all. I, I mean, I have no preference. It's not about 
what what is good or or what is bad. But what I was saying is that composers hear keys very personal and, and it's a motive for them. So so people like Mozart heard like a key of in F sharp and it had a feel to him. So certain things that he wrote, he liked to write in F sharp. It's kind of like ACDC writing in A or E. It just sounds right. Those keys are right for that music. And so what I meant that of course I was taken out of context and I don't mean to be sarcastic when I say that, but people just misinterpret uh, these things that, that are, are really universal truths in this, that I don't like F sharp more because it sounds evil or mean. F sharp to other composers in the past had a darker sound to it, so they liked that key in minor keys. That's all I said. And so this is how you have to think about it. When, when I teach modes, when I used to, I would show, look at the feeling of a mode like Dorian. It sounds like Santana, and so, but the thing about the modes, it doesn't resolve like a, like a harmonic minor scale. The best way you can resolve a Doran, that's it. And so when I learned harmony, I learned that scales resolved. And, and scales, in other words, when you hear this, you want to go, or, in other words, the five chord wants to go back. When you hear this. The best way to change keys is to use what's called a secondary dominant. In other words, you find the five chord, the dominant chord. See, each one of these tones, those seven tones, has a name too. And the four chord, subdominant. Five chord dominant, submediant. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on, but that, that's a, a little more advanced thing, so you don't have to know all this. But I'm trying to make a complex idea be very simple, even for people who play, because, see, your ear was going to tell you where to go. Now, um, so, when you play these scales and modes, you start with G major. I'm sorry. Then what does it sound like playing G major from A to A? Or what does it sound like on G major playing B to B? Or what does it sound like on G major in G major starting on the fourth note or C? So it's called the Lydian mode. The Lydian mode is really great. It's that sense of wonderland. That's one of my songs called Five Forever. It's a tribute to Dave Brubeck. But I actually played it in the, in the Lydian mode. It's kind of the Steven Spielberg sense of wonder. And so what I do is I attribute feelings to different modes. That's what I was talking about when you read, Michelangelo Badio loves F sharp minor because it's evil and mean. Well, I'm not evil and mean, and I don't believe that. I just like certain keys for different sounds. Certain modes have different feelings. So when you hear a major scale, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, 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 happy. It's a happy sounding scale. In fact, when Ozzy did Crazy Train, you hear this. When you hear that, then he breaks into this. That's a major scale. The Prince of Darkness is playing and singing over a major scale and he's going, it sounded to me like. Sounds like a nursery rhyme, crazy.
That's how it go. Oh, oh, my only the Prince of Darkness could sing that and make it cool. And I talked about this in my tribute to Randy. I tried everything to go. <laughs> so major it's like happy I'm so happy I'm so happy happy I am so happy and I was like are you kidding me how am I supposed to play that and you have this evil riff but see so what I do is not only did I learn those scale degrees but I attributed feelings to each scale and mode so I had a basic idea. For example, if you play the, a major scale starting on the third degree, so let's say we're in G again. It's called the Phrygian mode. Ingve likes this mode, but it's like... It's like, oh, you know, it's kind of metal. You know, it's kind of old school metal, but that's the Phrygian mode. Then you have the fourth scale degree, so that would be C, that's that Lydian mode. That's. You know, it's like, it's just a sense of wonder. I, when I hear the Lydian mode, Steve Vai likes this model up. A, Uh, switch guitars here I am and then I'm going to show you the rest and then I'll answer some questions but it, I'm going to do something uh, for you today too um, what I did was I wrote out the G major scale in uh, every position on guitar I don't care what anybody says what any guitar teacher says on planet earth uh, a lot of times I see scale positions that are hybrids of these five see what you want to do is you want a GPS of your fretboard. And so let me uh, switch guitars here. I'm going to play the Black Beauty here. Uh, this is the gu white guitar I was playing. It's one of my signature series and it's called the M24 and it's in satin white. And satin white's really beautiful. Uh, it, it's, a, it's like a, a flat white. Like this is called the M24 Satin Black. But do you see the finish on there, it, it's like flat black. I just love this guitar. I, I really love it. It's just bad. And I'm going to tell you the price of this. It lists around $250. Uh, and the reason for this is, is Sawtooth Guitars, who I'm very close with. Um, you know, I, I've explained a million times, if you know my career, you know, I was with another company for a long time, but the owner died. He died. And, and with him died my passion for that company. I don't know that new company. But in the meantime, the people from Sawtooth, I had worked for, with for many years already. I, I met them uh, doing a, a workshop for them. And this is like seven, eight years ago already. And, and we just hit it off good. We were of kindred spirits. And, and, and uh, you know, I just really loved the, their philosophy. I loved the, their business acumen, everything about the company. But this guitar is great. And there's pre-orders now. But let me get back to what I was saying about the scales. That's now, I'm tuned up a half step to concert pitch. My other guitars uh, had a locking trim, that one. Uh, and So this is concert pitch. In other words, if you're going to play with a symphony orchestra and they said G, that's the G. Right? So now... G major. Now we're up to the Lydian mode. Now again, these these names were were around for centuries. So I didn't make any of these up. But these are the major scales. They almost call, literally called them the church modes, and, and because a lot of it was based around uh, a church idea, especially in Europe, very you know biblical references and everything you know, a, a lot to do with God. And uh, so, I mean, Bach, that's what he wrote. I mean, uh, his, you know, he was really a church composer. And uh, so, you know, but a lot of people were, a lot of people were very religious back then and everything w w was based around the church, uh, especially in music. Now, so after you have this Lydian, see what I like to do 
You know, people think sometimes, oh, Michelangelo Beatty is so technical and all that. I feel deep feelings about music. I always have. I'll listen to something. You, you, you might laugh when I say this, my guilty pleasure. I want it that way. Tell me why ain't nothing but a heart. I love that song. I love that song. And or I'll listen to like Genesis with Peter Gabriel, uh, selling England by the pound, citizens of open glory. I, it's, it just gives me a feel. When I was in the band Holland, uh, Tom Holland, and you know, he, he won't, you know, he, he never believed I was such a fan of his, but his voice used to give me chills. Like certain singers, like, you know, it's just funny, but when I hear like a certain vocalist sing, like look at, like Freddie Mercury, nothing really matters, anyone can see. When, and of course he has a lot higher voice than me, but when I hear that, I get a feeling of, I mean, when he's saying it, it's so beautiful and it's so much emotion. I get a feeling just the same way that when I heard McCartney, you know, well, you told me, you know, an oh, darling, you didn't need me anymore. I mean, or let it be, let it be, just the way he sang, or early John Lennon, or even Pantera, <laughs> you know, but the colors from now. I mean, I listen to them, I'm like, I believe you, I'm a disciple. And so, but I get feelings from this, and I always have. My music, you know, it's like, it's weird when people sometimes would say, oh, there's no, like, emotion and no boundaries, man. I mean, oh, they, you, you know, Angelo can't write, Video can't write. I'm thinking, I wrote no boundaries. That song is a really famous song, and especially in guitar circles, and, and, and uh, you know, all over the planet. And I think when I, when I do just this, like, like uh, now I'm in stuff, but, uh, whoops, got to turn this down. When I play that, when I play parts of No Boundaries, I have it set up for distortion. Or like. And I have the timpani soaring. Da -da -dum. I mean, I know if that was orchestrated, it would just, you freak out. And I'm going to do that. That's one of the things I'm going to do in my life. I'm going to orchestrate some of my really amazing songs. And like peace, just. get a feeling from that. And so I never understood when people say, oh, it's all fast. Well, what part about slow sounds fast to you? And so this is what I do when I explain music. The major scale is happy. The Dorian mode sounds like Santana. The Phrygian mode sounds like Ingve. The Lydian mode sounds like Steve I. Now, the Mixolydian mode, how about this one? Jeff back on. See, like. The Mixolydian sounds like Jeff Beck. It sounds like I'm Broadway. It's, uh, you know, George Benson uh, did a great cover of that song, but I mean, when you hear that, it's kind of funky. When you hear me play blues, I play, I play modally. So when I hear the four chord, I immediately think of Dorian mode. When I when I hear the tonic, yeah, I can play major, I can play blues, but I also think mixolydian. And so when, when you know these modes, like for example, F, that's the five. So you can think of five as like the Jeff Beck sound that uh, like. It's called Freeway Gem, but it's like, I think it's 
the key. I think it's in the key. Like uh, the key of G, I mean. I took a few beats out of there just to move the guitar up. But see, this is how I think about it. This is how I memorize the modes. I assigned an atmosphere, a feeling to this. And see, this is the thing, if you know anything about my music when you listen to it, when I play, even when I play fast, I get a feeling. Like, I'm not kidding when I said keys to the Lamborghini. I love playing fast. It's like, bullets in the gun! I am Rambo, damn it! And so that's what I feel like. But when I play slow, I play slow. Like, even my song, Intermezzo. I always have a theme. How about uh, Rainforest? So to me, it's music is always about a feeling. It's always about a feeling. Now, one of the things I do understand is... Uh, you know, back in the day, you know, when I was in Nitro, our, our president of our label said, Michael, I want you to overplay all the time. So I completely played fast. But if you ever analyze just the solo in Freight Train alone, I play it like 98% the same now that I did back then. I actually wrote out that solo, if you can believe it. And, and because it all made sense to me, it was like, like it was E flat, then F D, da 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 da. So a lot of these things, um, you know, I'm I'm I can't believe people are blowing up my phone now while I'm online. Okay, so I'm getting all these text messages coming in with all these questions. Okay, anyway, but the point is this: that when you listen to modes and scales, if you ascribe, if you if you put a feeling or a sound to it, it makes it much easier to understand. So after the mixolydian mode. Then we have what's called the Aeolian mode. And uh, that is really cool. It's the natural minor scale. And see, because if you think of something very simple, I said very early in, the, in this uh, broadcast today, there are four types of chords. They call them sonorities. So you have major, you have minor, you have augmented, you have diminished. And so when you think of major, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. But you think of minor. I'm sad, I'm very sad. So, you know, I, it's the sound of metal. Okay, so minor is sad. Major, happy, minor, sad. What is augmented? Oh my God. The sense of wonder. Is Peter Pan really going to fly? Are the Goonies really going to see the pirate ship? And so, you know, is E.T. really phoning home? And then the diminished chord, it's just mean. It's an ugly chord. And so we used to hear this when we were kids, like, if you screw up really bad. Oh, too bad for you. Really too bad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And so a diminished chord is kind of evil. But that is one. Those are the four sonorities. What? <laughs> four? Wait. Let's do it right. Let's do it by metal. Two plus two is metal four. And so when you understand that, happy, sad, sense of wonder, evil, mean, and weird. And so those are the four basic ones. Now then then everything branches out from there, but it's like a major scale happy. Dorian mode, Santana. Phrygian mode, Ingve. Lydian mode, Steve Vai. Mixolydian mode, Jeff Beck, George Benson. Then you have the natural minor scale. <laughs> So, in other words, that's more Judas Reese to me. I remember hearing this go. Natural minor. Natural minor. So, and what you have, and that starts, and each one of these is a number. So you have natural minor on the sixth scale degree. Now, the seventh is just weird. It's called the Locrian mode. You know, it works.
work some diminish. Um, you know, you can use it a lot, but I categorize that as weird. Okay, so the Locrian was just way out there for me. So you have these scale degrees and you have these modes. And so, and again, it's about a feeling. Like, what are you trying to portray? But this is how you use it in a solo. When you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you know the scale degrees in a major. And then you hear, for example, you hear a solo section that's E. F. Okay, so immediately in my mind, the first thing I think of is Ingve. No! The first thing I think of is Phrygian mode. And so I know right away, like just even this. You know, Symphony of Destruction. I'm, I love Marty Friedman to death. I, I was watching him today. He's got such a unique picking style, and, and his note choices are really amazing. And, and he actually made, in that song, a, a, a scale work that's actually not even the Phrygian mode. You know, he used kind of bluesy and, you know, and, and some uh, chromatics in there, but it really wasn't the Phrygian. And I did a cover of that, and I actually did do a Phrygian. And then uh, Vinnie Moore uh, did a version. He, he did a guest solo, so did George Bellis, if you know him. Two amazing guitar player. But Vinnie is really spectacular and, and, you know, has had an amazing career as well. And, and uh, but, you know, they treat these things differently. But that what I do, the first thing that I do is when I hear a chord progression, I ask myself, what key or what mode is it in? And then, now here's another thing. People said, oh, I like the Dorian mode. That's not true. I like a Dorian position. Completely different. This is what I mean. I'm going to show on this page later today. I'm going to show you that... Each of these scales has five positions on guitar and five only. Uh, if, you, if a guitar teacher comes up to you and says, well, no, that's not correct, they are incorrect. Because here is what I did, and I'm going to post this on this page, on my Facebook page, after we're all done. So what I'm going to do is, when I explain this, you will not only have gotten scales and modes today, but you're going to have a GPS roadmap of the entire fretboard of the guitar on every scale and mode that I just talked about today. Now watch. Here's the Michelangelo Badia way of thinking. When somebody says, don't think in boxes or don't think, listen, you know what my thinking is? Think however you want, as long as you get to play what you want to play. Because my world of music is feelings. Now, I'm a very technical player, more machine than man, but I play in my, in what I hear in my head I get emotions out of the way I vibrato. I, I love things that, I play things that I love to play. Now watch this. Here is the first position in G. Now, we are not moving diagonally up the neck. We are trying to move straight up and straight down. There are only five positions of any scale on planet Earth on guitar. If somebody says no, sorry, bro, or do that, dude or do that, you are the one that's wrong, not this. Now watch this. Now, this is every single note in the key of G, but I'm gonna start on F sharp. Why? Because that falls in this position. Now watch. Now I'm gonna start in here. That's the scale, but that's not all the notes that you can play. Here are all the notes you can play in that scale. It's almost like playing the Locrian mode, the seven. Position one, position two. There's no wild fret spacings. Straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, and they overlap. Position three. Position four. Position five. And that's it. Then you repeat yourself. If you want to traverse up and down the fretboard and you move like this, or you do a, 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 just a, a fret spacing like this. Now I'm moving my, my uh, ring finger purposely so you can see. What you're doing 
was using a combination of, of position one and position two. And I see this written out like this a lot, where people will say, okay, here's your G major scale. And so that's right, but that's not all the notes on the fretboard. It's different. And so that is a combination of positions one and two. I'm going to post this. I have them all done, and I have them done for seven string guitars too. So anyway, that is my tirade about scales and modes. Now I know that a lot of advanced players know this in their own way, but it helps to think about it in a more classical term because, you know, I have a saying that, uh, you know, people always say, think outside the box. You know what my saying is? You have to know what's inside the box before you can think outside the box. And what I'm telling you is what's inside the box. And it is really important. And so, all right, I'm going to switch guitars. And I'm going to play a guitar for you that is really cool. This is an ES series, and, and the S stands for strap. Uh, it is, all my guitars are sawtooth. And, and you know, I, I, I get tired of saying it. Look, at I have nothing against my former guitar company. Uh, they're still around. Uh, but the owner died. The owner that I was, he was like a family, he died. And with him, my loyalty, my allegiance, and my even understanding of what the heck they're doing uh, is gone. It, it was gone. I, there was no, uh, I, I can't even wear the shirt. And I've known the people from Sawtooth Guitars for many years. This is not like I just decided to go there. We had been talking about this for the last couple of years. And Everybody just gets along great. We have a lot of things in common, but we're both, we're all dedicated to, to making great instruments that are affordable for you. And, and I've said it a million times, we just don't want, see so many guitar companies, and I, I've said it, I, it's like a pizza, like a pie. They, all they want to do is say, Ibanez has 35% of this pie. We want to take market share from them. So they're not trying to help anybody. They're just trying to steal from somebody else. That's not my way. You know, and I've said it a million times. Anybody can make a $10,000 guitar. You know how you make a $10,000 guitar? You call up a really good guitar builder and say, hey, bro, I'm going to pay you like eight grand to really kill it for me. And then the other two, you just goof around. And I'm, goof I'm goofing around when I say that. But anybody can make an expensive guitar that's good. The hard thing to do is make a reasonably priced guitar that's good. And that's where Sawtooth beats everybody on planet Earth. They use woods that are readily available, sycamore. On my new signature, it looks like rosewood. Wood. It's called sandalwood. Why? Rosewood's not available. Sandalwood is available in, a, in it's very plentiful, just like sycamore. It grows all over the planet here in North America, grows in Asia. But anyway, I love this guitar. <laughs> Now, I released a new album, and I, I had, at that time, I had just switched companies. And so, you know, people ask me, well, what do you use on the album? Um, we are going to be creating uh, a new Michelangelo Badio 7 string. See, we have a line of guitars. It's called the MAB series. Uh, we don't have the 7 out yet, but a lot of the rhythms on my new album are 7 strings. So, I have seven string signature guitars and I use guitars from a few other brands. It wasn't just limited. And so, but the leads I did almost entirely on sawtooth guitars and they sound really good. I mean, I love this guitar. I mean, and this guitar goes for less than 200 bucks. Mixolydian mode with a little. So, um, but that's what I use. Now, my new record is called More Machine Than Man. And, and uh, I got that title from actually Guitar World Magazine. I was a columnist for them for many years, for about six years. And they actually did a, a feature story on me and they called me More Machine Than Man. And they probably got it from Star Wars, you know, because, but I, I consider like that I would be not Darth Vader, maybe Garth Vader. And, and so I'm the good side of the force. I, the, I like the force with me. I do not like the dark side of the force. First of all, I'm too vain and I look pretty good for my age. So I don't want all those like wrinkles and all that crazy stuff. But I, I really, on this album, More Machine Than Man, 
Uh, we have Chris Adler playing a couple songs on there, uh, Victor Wooten, and these songs are brutal. And here's what I did. Every time I do a record, again, it goes back to my feeling about music. I feel what I do. I always do. And I, I don't understand. I can understand that some people don't feel what I feel. I completely understand that. Music is subjective. There's not, a, like when you hit a home run or you score, score a goal in soccer, what Europeans and the rest of the world calls football, if you kick the ball into the net, you get a point. That's easy. If you hit a home run in baseball over the fence, okay, we get it. But if you write a great song that the entire world feels something about it, but you go, I don't like that song. It's your right. It's, it's subjective. Music is subjective. When I write my music, just, I had a song a long time ago called Science Fiction, and I went, I just, a simple melody. <laughs> But, and, and like, like, it was. So, et cetera, et cetera. But I got a feeling from that song. And, and just when I hear it, I, I still get the same feeling today. And so when I, on this new album, what I did, I wanted the feeling of brutality. And so we played songs on this new record. One of them's called The Bandlands. It's got this great group. It's so mean. And then I have another song called 21st Century Beck, where the time signatures are all over the place, but I'm playing really bluesy, and it's just cool. And then uh, Andrea Martingelli is a guest artist on there, too. He plays a fantastic solo. Uh, he plays with Dave Ellison from Megadeth, and uh, he's uh, the, the metal... Uh, like head uh, of a huge school in Europe called MMI, uh, wonderful people. Uh, but anyway, the, the new album is really amazing. And, and I'm a keyboard player too, and I played keys on all my records. If you hear like albums like Intermezzo, it's very layered and dense and a lot of counterpoint and things. Well, on this new record, it's just brutal. I, I use the rhythm guitars as like, they're almost exercises. When guitar players start to play, uh, the first song called Laser Guided, it's so mean, just the rhythm track alone, and then the melody, and there's a chorus uh, that, but it, it's it's brutal, and, and that's what I wanted to show. I wanted to have it raw in your face, Be and I'll tell you my reasoning for this. Black Sabbath 13. If you listen to Ozzy's records, especially like the one with Gus G, who's an amazing guitar player, or you know his solo albums started to use every effect known to man on his voice and. All layered. I mean, it's the production is so lavish, but I thought it took a little of the humanity away. Where Rick Rubin said with Black Sabbath 13, he goes, Let's, what is Black Sabbath? It's a guitar player. It's a bass player. It's a drummer, and it's Ozzy. That's it. There's no effects. The effects are the humans playing. That's exactly what I did on this new album. The effects are my fingers playing these vicious riffs, and my uh, lead guitar playing over this in spots. Because when I perform these songs on tour, part of the melodies are, are the rhythm guitar, and you hear virtually no keyboards. And, and especially when Chris Adler played, I, I have a great admiration for his style. And stylistically across the entire record, I was very Chris Adler influenced. I mean, all those grooves from Lamb of God, you know. <laughs> I mean, he just grooves, but we did very progressive things together. I mean, there's a lot of stops and starts. There's a lot of air. And so when you listen to this new record, it's still a Michelangelo video record, but I never wanted to fall into the trap. I have a lot. I have well over a dozen 
solo albums out. We're at like the 15th right now. And, and that's not counting my two major label bands. I've released a lot of music in my life. But this album is different from my other ones. See, I never wanted to be a parody of myself where, where you heard the same riff over and over again because that happened to me a little bit when I did the album Lucid Intervals uh, and Moments of Clarity. I really, I'm very proud of it and the production and the songs. But I noticed I was doing some things that I did in previous albums, I said, you know, that's got to stop. And so when you hear like my first album, No Boundaries, my first album had no boundaries and rainforest. Then second album, Planet Gemini. Then the third one was called Tradition. Then the fourth one, Lucid Intervals. Then I did my first tribute record, Hands Without Shadows. And the list goes on and on. But each one of those sounds like me, but it's stylistically a little different and has a theme. Planet Gemini, very prog. Uh, no boundaries, very emotional melodies with, with you know, uh, a, a magazine in Europe called Laser Guided. He, they said Michelangelo Badio, uh, the laser guided techniques and the fastest of fingers. He's practically a god, seriously. And I was like, that's cool. I didn't say that about myself. I never say anything about myself. I just try to play. But the new album is really great. It's me, but it, it's a me that is not a, a parody of myself. You don't hear what I do on this new album and say, wow, that sounds like other stuff. Uh, and that's what I love about it. Now, um, a few last things, okay? Now, they're doing tree orders, pre orders. Okay, when somebody, this is great. This is our world today. Somebody writes Trump 2020. You know, in, in music, it's like that too. Um, I feel my job as a teacher is not to be biased. I am the most unbiased, unprejudiced teacher that you will ever meet because I don't think it's a job for me to, you know, some guitar teachers and teachers in general are like politicians. They have one side or the other. So they will try to steer you in the direction that they think is the best. See, I don't think like that. If you like Nickelback or you like Bach or you like Ingve, or you like Avenged Sevenfold or Five Finger Death Punch or Miley Cyrus, it is not my job to dictate what is good or what is bad. That is subjective. That's what feels good to you. My job is to show you how to play all the techniques that are available so you can do what you want. And, and, and that's something that I found that I'm kind of in the minority of sometimes. You never hear me slam other artists. You don't hear me talking about politics. I don't talk about religion. Yeah, I have my beliefs, but you wanna know what I really believe? I believe to help you in the most unbiased way possible. So anyway, I'm gonna conclude this uh, tonight and we're sorry about the technical diff difficulties. I know I'm backwards, okay? But I'm gonna just tell you right, I got the brand new iPhone 11 Pro. When I flipped the screen around, I became a green negative. I was like son of the Hulk. And so all I can tell you is this, that uh, even playing left-handed today, uh, that you see me, uh, you know, holding a right-handed guitar playing left-handed, uh, I can't say enough about uh, the way that uh, I, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to be unbiased and genuinely help. Secondly, I really believe in sawtooth guitars. And I don't want to say it anymore why I'm not with my former company. That former company doesn't exist anymore. Okay, that owner's gone. And he's been gone for three years. And for three years, I have like, hey man, what are you gonna do? You know, I, I, you know, this is a long time coming for me. Sawtooth, the people at Sawtooth, I have known for a long time. It's not like I just made up my mind one day. They are amazing people. They are musicians. They are top business people uh, in the music industry. That's the key. They are, they are top people in the industry that we are in right now. Not coming from, you know, finance or somewhere else. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, it, there, you know, you can be a drummer and lead a guitar company or a drummer and lead an amp company like Jim Marshall. In fact, that's kind of cool to do that. You have a perspective that other guitars don't have, but you're a musician and you're in the music business. That's your game. So anyway, get the new album, More Machine Than Man. They're doing pre-orders now. It's on Rat Pack Records. I'm really proud of this. Uh, Chris Adler, uh, he told me the other day, he, you know, he really thought the trucks were great. Um, it's a real trade-up between me and Chris when you hear him. I mix the drums really loud. I have the bass really loud. 
the rhythm guitar is really loud and the lead guitar really loud. It's not overdone with lavish symphonic production, although I, I had every right and I could have done that, but I, I've done records like that. My intermezzo record is like that. It's layered like a freaking symphony. Uh, and I love it. This album is like Black Sabbath 13. It's raw. It's in your face. And everything has a reason for being there. Anyway, on behalf of Sawtooth Guitars, Sawtooth Amps, which I'm using the little 25-watt combo amp that's deadly. It was so loud I had to turn it down lower. Uh, it's really loud. It's got great reverb. But I'm Michelangelo Badio. See ya.